Hey friends, my name is Colby Sharp. I'm a fifth grade teacher in Michigan and this is a new episode of One Question with me, Mr. Sharp. In this series, I ask people in the literacy and the book world one question and then they answer it. And then at the end, they get a chance to ask you a question and I am actually giving away two books as part of this video. So stick around to the end to find out how you can win. Today's Jen Cervalo. The one, the only, Jen Saravallo. I just read her brand new Reading Conferences book. It is amazing. Jen is such an amazing educator, knows so much, is such a champion for kids in reading. I wanted to know if Jen met a new teacher and she could give them five books, what five books would Jen Saravallo give them? Are you ready? You excited? All right, here are the five books that Jen Saravallo would give a new teacher. Take it away, Jen. Hello everybody, this is Jen Saravallo, excited to be here to answer Colby Sharp's question. He asked me, which five books, of all the books that you see on all these shelves in my office, which five books would I gift to a new teacher? So I have some favorites from you know the last couple of years that I'm gonna share with you now. So the first step, Kids First from day one. If you wanna create a student-centered classroom and think about the impacts of your environment, of your schedule, of the, the way that you talk to children, the language that you use, this is an excellent book to make sure to pick up. Second on my list is this new book. We got this by Cornelius Minor. If you care about equity and access for all children, which we all should, this is an excellent choice. Um, you know, I think one of the things that's hard about being a new teacher is sometimes you look around you and you just sort of fall in line. You fall into what uh, the people around you are doing, a mentor that's assigned to you is doing. And Cornelius really gives us tools and strategies and the courage to stand up and do what's right for children. I love this new book by Cornelius Minor. Next up is Sara Ahmed's Being the Change, Lessons and Strategies to Teach Social Comprehension. So one of the things that's gonna come up in all new teachers' classrooms is some tough topics. Um, hopefully you're giving your kids books, giving them access to books and reading aloud books that give them the opportunity to talk about tough topics. And even if you don't, tough topics will come up. And I think as being a new teacher, something that's sometimes hard is finding the language and knowing exactly how to, um, to talk with children about this. And this is a really practical, uh, easy to read guide to help with um, strategies uh, that will help you in the classroom and help your kids just to be better people in the world. So being the change is a great one. All right, now I'm gonna give you a math book because I have recently, I feel like a new teacher. I've got a daughter who has told me she doesn't love math. So I've been studying up on math and I've been reading a lot about math instruction. And it's been a while since I taught math in, the, in my classroom. So I'm gonna tell you as a new math teacher myself, um, it's this series that's been the most helpful to me. Um, this is Joe Bowler, who you know from Mathematical Mindsets. Um, this is her practical book called Math Mindsets, um, and it's a series, so this is the grade four edition. My daughter's a fourth grader. And inside of it, it's organized by these concepts, which you can see on the cover, so seeing patterns, using operations flexibly, and there's just these really practical ways to help make these concepts visual and interesting, and they're great activities and great prompts for discussion. Um, I would have taught math so differently had I had this when I was a new teacher. All right, and the last one, I have to, I have to kind of cheat here and, and do two. This is, I really do think, the book I wish I had for reading and writing instruction. Sorry to plug my own work, Colby, but I think this would be really helpful for new teachers. Uh, reading and writing strategies, chock full of ideas for teaching when you just feel like you don't know what to say to children. Um, there's a resource to help you. Thanks so much for letting me answer a question, Colby, and good luck to all the new teachers out there. Take care. All right, now I have a question for all of you. And that question is, what can you do for a new teacher in your building? I'm asking this because when I was a new teacher, I survived pretty much only because of a mentor I had down the hall. Her name was Lee, and I spent every prep period in her room observing her, asking her questions. We had pizza lunch every day together, and she was so patient and so supportive with me. So if you, Lee, if you're out there, thank you for helping me survive my early years as a classroom teacher. And to all of you, Think right now, what can I do for a brand new teacher to help save them? Just like Jen was saved by Lee. Take care.
Friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. Jen, thank you so much for those five books. I don't have that math book. I have the other four, but I don't have that math book. I need to get it. Friends, if you answer Jen's question down below in the comments, I will randomly pick one winner for these two books, two of the books that Jen mentioned in her response today. So let us know down in the comments and we can find some ways that we can help new teachers become even more awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have an awesome-tastic day and happy, happy reading.